June 30th is the launch of my last and final Florex course and the first 10 people will get 20% off. Make sure you have that date saved or get on the wait list. There is a link in the description. And also before we get started, I need you guys to like this video because every time that you like this video, it shows me one, that you support me and two, whenever you like this video, it helps this message get brought to other traders that are in need of help and it's 100% free to do so. So on this video, I'm going to show you guys how to catch really big moves, how to understand why these moves are happening and how to predict when the next move is going to happen. And we are going to do this on US 30, so stay tuned. Let's get into my computer. All right, guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go first off to the daily time frame. Now, what I like to do is I like to go to higher time frames like the daily and the hour four and really look for reversal candles because you guys have to understand that when we are seeing reversal candles, the higher impact or the bigger move that they're going to have are going to occur on higher time frames. So I like to start with the hour chart and we can see right here that we had a clear doji right here and then a nice drop down. We have a doji right here and then a nice push up. So the first thing that we need to do is look at these higher time frames. Now, after that, we need to understand that once we look at the higher time frame and we see a nice doji, maybe a nice continuation candle like this one, we can now understand that there's going to be a very nice move after that, especially if we have a nice reversal candle like a doji, a spinning top, a shooting star, something like that. Obviously, candles with the longer wick, there's going to be a bigger push up. So we had a small wick right here still a nice push down and you guys also need to remember that this is a daily time frame so after this doji that thing dropped 5500 pips within one day but you also need to remember that when these moves are happening the actual moves are most likely going to be happening during the one london session or two the new york session and i've i've seen time and time after again that a lot of these moves are happening during the New York session. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark up this doji right here, and then we're gonna bring it down to like the minute 15 and the minute five time frame. Okay. There she is right there. Okay, so this is gonna be a perfect example right here. So this box right here was the Asia session going into the London session. So it does look like it pushed up for the London session right here. And then we could see that a new day actually did close right before the Asia session. So at 12, this was actually, um, I think Memorial Day. Let me see exactly. Memorial Day, no, it wasn't. So this was actually going, yeah, I think to Monday, the 27th. Yeah, this was Monday or Tuesday. Yep, Monday right here. So this was Memorial Day. So we can see that this daily candle, the daily candle actually closed right after Memorial Day. And then we can see the actual move occurred during the New York session right here. So we are on the minute 15 time frame. So what we're gonna do is once we see that reversal candle occur on those higher time frames like that, then we're gonna break it down to smaller time frames like the minute 15 and the minute five. So when I see a reversal candle, on higher time frames like the minute five, or I mean on the daily chart and the hour four chart, I'm then gonna wait for the New York session. And once that session occurs, I'm then gonna start looking for entry. So I'm gonna look for a lower low and then a lower high because if we had our doji, which we had our doji right here, we can see this doji was a bearish doji. So that means when we go on the minute 15 time frame, we're gonna be looking for lower lows and lower highs like we can see right here. So right as it hits this point right here, this was a wick of the doji and then it came down. We can see that the um, body after that, so it didn't retest the wick. When it came down and hit the body, it started to go down and form lower lows and lower highs. And this right here was at 6 a.m. So we're gonna wait for the market open or if you're really about it, you can enter right after the market, before the market opened. So we can see that it started to push down and this is where we're just looking for lower highs. So this is the minute 15 time frame. We can see right here, 6.15, 6.30. 
here's the market open. So I'd look for a lower low and then a new lower high. So we can see this is where our entry would occur right here. And if you're not trying to look at the minute 15 time frame, then you can look at lower time frames. Overall, I want you guys to understand that we're going from higher time frames down to lower time frames. So I want to show you there's actually a setup that happened last Friday. It was Thursday going into Friday, I think, or yeah. And it was on the hour four chart. Let me go back to that date. I think it was on Thursday, Thursday or Friday. Okay, perfect. So this was on June 2nd. So this was going into Friday. This is Friday right here. So this is basically a new day. Um, and we can see right here that we had this reversal candle happen right here. And the move did happen in the London session. The actual move happened, broke down right here. But what you guys need to do is have your eye on these time frames, these higher time frames. And what you could do is set a timer for every four hours. So at 10 my time, a new or this hour four candle is going to close and a new hour four candle is going to open up. So even right here, this would have been a nice setup, this doji right here. So we're going to mark this up and then we're going to go down to the lower time frames and see how it's playing out. If we could have saw that reversal candle on lower time frames. Okay, so we saw in the hour four that a bottomed hour right here, this was a low of that doji. And then this is right here, I think 1500. Let me go back. So this candle opened at 1400, closed at 1800. So at 1800 is when we saw the move, the push up. So it's right here, right at 1800. We even saw a higher high than a higher low right here. And we saw this bullish engulf, and we have a bearish candle followed by a bullish candle. We are rejecting our 10 moving average, and I have been discussing my 10 moving average on the previous video, so you guys know. But really what I'm overall getting at in this video is to overall see these big moves happening. You need to see it on higher time frames first, and then move it down to the lower time frames. And it's really just confluence in a way where we're looking at the higher time frame, and we're adding up that confluence on the lower time frame. But you really do not need to have confluence when all you need is confirmation on one time frame the hour four or the daily is really where the time where the um confirmation is going to come and that's going to overall give you a bias on what you're going to do next whether you're going to buy or sell so if i'm looking at the hour four and let's say i trade i look at the hour four just to get confirmation i saw this hour four candle right here and then I was like, all right, it's for sure going to drop. Like, there's no reason this trade isn't going to drop. It rejected the psychological level. We could see that we have support right here that later became resistance. Rejected it right here and had a nice push down. So the same thing is most likely going to happen. Once we have that confirmation, then we can go down to lower time frame. So let's mark this up one more time. And now we're going to go down to like the minute five. And 1800 is when that trade started to drop. I think so is around there so we can see on the date on the hour four time frame that this was like the high of that hour four candle once it closed and then we're going to start looking for lower lows and lower highs so we can see all throughout the Asia session just consolidating BS and then we start to come into the London session and that's when it starts to push down so if you're trading during the London session this is where you're going to trade and get in your lower lows and lower highs, lower lows, lower high, lower low, lower high. And all you're doing is just letting this trade melt because when you see confirmation on the hour four time frame, like we saw on this candle, guys, that means that we're going to see a nice drop. And if we're looking at the hour four candle, like look right here on this candle, that's 860 pips. So our risk would not be big at all. So we're going to go for at least a 1 to 2 risk to reward ratio or a 1 to 3. So we're probably going to be aiming for like 3,000 pips on this trade right here. Well, an 860 pip stop loss is not bad. Or 920, that is not bad for the hour 4 chart. And then it draws 590 pips. And then we can see right here, ends up tanking 3,900 pips. So obviously this was like more of a swing trade right here, but you could have been scalping the markets within that trade actually happening. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. Peace.